Tired of overpriced Facebook ads and rejected ads and getting your ad accounts shut down and all that other stuff. A lot of the last few years we have spent teaching agencies how to diversify their platform and how to get their own clients, not just through using Facebook ads, but through YouTube ads specifically. It is one of the best intent platforms you can find to find people who are actively looking for ways to build their businesses, to generate leads, to create real revenue for their companies. Just recently, just the other day, I did a video inside of our free Facebook group showing agencies exactly how step-by-step -step to do research, to actually create the video, and to launch a campaign on YouTube to create agency clients. This video was all about using YouTube ads to generate clients for their agency. So let's jump in guys, and if you like this video and if you wanna see more videos like it, teaching you how to run a digital business, acquire clients for that digital business, actually fulfill for them, all you have to do is smash that subscribe button as we are putting videos out just exactly like this every single week. So hit that subscribe button and let's dive in. This is all about how to generate uh, clients for your agency, your SMMA marketing agency, using YouTube ads. Let's get shit. Today, that's what we're going to be going on about using YouTube ads to acquire agency clients for yourself. So I want to teach you guys how to use YouTube ads specifically on how to get agency clients for yourself. So again, today, guys, what we are talking about specifically is leveraging YouTube ads to acquire clients for your SMMA marketing agency. Now, the same process and same step-by-step -step strategy that I'm about to show you, that I'm about to go through today, can also be leveraged by you for your client fulfillment. But we're going to try and focus it in a little bit on specifically how to acquire clients for your agency. And it's kind of a step-by-step -step process. So I'm going to kind of walk through what is the process first. So what are the different things we're going to be covering for YouTube ads to acquire agency clients? All right. So the four five things we're going to be reviewing today is how to do research in the first place. Number two, how to use that research to set up proper targeting. Number three, how and what to do for creating an offer that works for YouTube ads. Four is going to be video structure, so you understand how to do content for this type of thing. And finally, optimizing your ongoing campaigns. Okay, so let's start with research. And what does that mean? So inside of the inner circle, we have this sheet that we use, specific keywords, broad keywords, YouTube channels, all of this kind of stuff. Now, what we're doing here is we're creating different groups. First, we want to start out with broad keywords. So I just kind of a little bit dabbled in this today for what I would do for uh, agency, for coaching, for the, for the GSD. But I want to take it for you and say, cool, well, I want to do agency services for a chiropractor or a realtor. Okay, so it would be, you know, real estate lead gen, how to get listings, how to find buyers, how to market real estate, this kind of stuff, right? So this would be what I would say. Cool. Now we take these broad keywords and I want to break them down as much as I can. So what that means is we take the one here, we go real estate lead generation. This is our broad topic. Now we want to break this down into however many different miniature sub keywords we can think of. Okay. So it would be lead generation for realtors, lead generation for real estate. How to generate leads for real estate. How to do, how to use Facebook to generate realtor leads. Anything you can think of yourself that would be searched. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go over, we're going to go to YouTube. Okay. And we're going to say something along the lines of, you know, lead generation for real estate. And you're going to look at all the different things that pop up directly below it. Okay. So you'll notice now all of a sudden YouTube has been nice enough to give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 new keywords that I can put into my specific keywords. All right. So I've got all these different ones that are popping up because they're frequent searches that are related to the search that you just put up right there. So you can copy all of those 
over to here. Then you can grab another one of these, something like this, how to use Facebook to generate leads for realtors. You put the same thing up here. And it's not working there. So we say, get rid of the how-to. You'll see, boom, Facebook leads, Facebook lead generation. We say realtor leads, get a whole bunch of these. That's one way to do it. The second way to do it is you come over into the actual Google ad account itself and you come over here and you say, cool, I wanna discover new keywords. So I'm gonna say lead generation for realtors and I'm gonna click. And we're just gonna click on get results. Please select an account. Okay, fine, there's the account. Get results. Load faster. Come on, I already clicked the account. Okay, you're making me do it all again, that's fine. Lead generation for realtors. We're gonna click get results, there we go. And it's gonna show you a whole bunch of things. And then we're gonna expand on this. There we go. And you're gonna roll out three through here and see what are the different search terms that people are using. Now you got about 268. So let's just make it 500. And we're gonna sort by average monthly searches so we can see what has the most volume. And again, we've got all these keywords. Now you can just copy them and put them over here, right? Best lead generation for realtors. How to get leads, how to do real estate lead generation. And we're leveraging all of this. Somebody says, and we're going to copy the top ones all the way to the bottom, as long as they make sense. So if you start looking at like websites, maybe not, but like listing leads, real estate leads, all of these ones, you're just going to take and you're going to put over here. Then you're going to go, okay, so now my second broad keyword is listings. So I've got my general lead generation. I'm going to do how to get listings. And again, how to get listings as a realtor. How to get listings as a real estate agent, right? And you're just gonna keep going like that. You're gonna do the exact same thing. Say something like this, you know, using Facebook, you know, using Instagram. And the point here, guys, is that you want to create as many of these as you can and then use the two primary sources of finding more of them, like I just showed you, the YouTube way, which is go here and get a whole bunch of different things, right? How to get listings as a realtor, find the different ones on this, go over here, change this keyword out now for this one, right? Every time you get here, you're looking to create more information, doing this research to break down what you can get. And you're gonna do this for all four or more of your broad keyword subjects. So these are supposed to be umbrellas that can house a number of different specific keywords. You're using the broad topics to create a bunch of miniature ones underneath. So now what we're gonna do, right, is we're gonna go over for YouTube and we're gonna look for related YouTube channels. So if I go and I find one of my searches here, right? If I look over here and you're like, okay, how to get listings as a new real estate agent. We got this person, whoever this is, Real estate coaches we're going to have. This person is a real estate agent that's ready to level up your sales, probably another coach, right? These are all going to be people who are targeting real estate agents. They're either agencies or they're coaches, okay? These are exactly the type of people we want. So what do we do? We grab their things here and we put them over here underneath related YouTube channels, Okay, so we've got related YouTube channels. So we've got competitors. Probably every one of these YouTube channels, you could just put, you'd put Lloyda Velasquez over here. You'd find their URLs. So you can do things like click on the about and you could probably find, yep, URLs just for her, right? So you can grab the URL, you know the name and you're gonna go and do this. Now, obviously for you guys, you're gonna do all of this way more than the one or two things I'm doing right now, right? You wanna have as many keywords, specific keywords as you can. You wanna have a, as many broad categories as you can, a whole bunch of these related YouTube channels. You wanna really, really flesh this out, okay? Because what we're doing right now is research to break this down. What this research is going to help us on is going to be the targeting, okay? So we did the research. Now it's time to do the targeting and the targeting uses all the research that we just created. Okay. So think like on Facebook where we have just lookalikes and audiences and all this stuff, the stuff on the YouTube side of it gets a little tiny bit more 
complicated, but also pretty powerful intent wise. So now we say, okay, I have all of these lists of things. So what do I want to do now? I want to go and I want to build an audience. So we go into our account where we're going to run our YouTube ads from, and we're going to go to audience. Okay. Now we're going to create. What we're going to do here is actually create this through, no, not my, there we go. Sorry, I was on the wrong. We got to go to combine segments. You're going to go to here and you're going to create this. All location segment name, and then over here. Hold on. Got to go to an account that I have for myself so that I can show you this one properly. So we go here, we're going to go to our audience manager, and we're going to go to custom segments. Not sure why that wasn't showing up on the other one, but you go to custom segments. We're always going to use these kind of naming conventions, and we're going to click on plus. So the first thing we're going to do. All right, if we go look at our naming conventions, we're using URL, interest affinity, competitor, interest affinity, interest affinity, SMMA course, right? So what this means, custom intent, how we start an SMMA course, all this kind of stuff. So if we say interest affinity means interested in these things. Custom intent means actually search directly for those terms. And you can put the terms down below. So if I wanna say we're gonna create a August, 31st, we always want to date it, 2023, and we're going to say interest affinity, which simply means these are people on Google, on the internet, searching for these specific terms, right? And where do we get these terms from? Well, we're going to say the first one will be all keywords, just to make it easy for you. So all you're going to do is now go to your research, and what do we do? We copy all these, I guess, what is it this many? all these keywords right here, we come back over, and we simply put them in. And it will put all of these different keywords in for you so that you can have that. And it'll even show you uh, what they think the audience will look like. Okay, and I gotta get rid of the ones that are like subtopics and all that kind of stuff. It'll tell you some of these cannot be used for different reasons. So we'll just say, okay, how to use Facebook to generate realtor leads. And then eventually it'll tell you, cool, here are the probable statistics of what you've got going on. And then you would save. So that's one targeting audience you can now use on YouTube. Now, if I wanted to do a custom intent based on all keywords, again, reading this through is keywords describing your ideal customer's interests that they are actively researching to buy. Custom intent is the other one, this one, where it's search terms your ideal customer is actually using on Google. So literally the ones they are searching for. So we always wanna create an interest affinity and we wanna create an actual custom intent audience. And then after we do all keywords, what you'll do, and this is a little tedious at first, guys, but what you'll do is you'll come in and you're now going to create interest affinities and custom intents for the specific groupings. So you'll note over here, you'll see marketing softwares, competitor URLs, how to start an MMA. These things are where it's just taking these subtopic and groups. So everybody understanding now why when we did the research, we're breaking them up into broad keywords, subtopics, and these kind of groupings for testing purposes. Perfect. Now, a lot of you guys have watched my videos and my training is on how to do rapid fire testing and optimization and all that kind of stuff on the Facebook side of things, right? This is going to be a very similar process for when you're optimizing over here. You're just using different things, different tools, pulling different levers because you're on a different platform, right? So uh, whereas on Facebook... Rapid fire testing round one is audiences and it's all about the ad set level and it's all that. This one here is going to be all about segments, right? So if I go over to specifically, let's say one of these things, we're not using this at the moment, but if I go to somewhere, if I click over here and you'll see this one that was on this, I go to audiences, you can see how you would be doing rapid fire testing round one on this, which would be uh, audience segments doesn't happen on here, but you would break this down. So if this one had audience segments, you'd click here, it would be all down below it. And so what we're trying to do is create as many of these custom intent, custom interest, and then if I go back to audience manager real quick, custom segments. If we go here and create now, instead of these two buttons, if you wanna create the URL, competitor URL with URL interest affinities, meaning you can target actual audiences of your competitors or lookalike audiences based on your competitor's traffic. Who thinks that would be cool? 
if you could go and tra- tr- do like realtor.com's traffic as your target source for your YouTube ads, if you were targeting real estate agents, who thinks that would be a useful, a useful thing to be able to do guys. So what you would need to do to do that is all you have to do is see these little hidden buttons. Don't know, never understood why they hide these. And then you simply click and you say, okay, cool. So what I actually want is not search terms. What I want is people who browse websites similar to, and I would say realtor.com, right? I don't know. I can't remember if you have to put www or not, but let's do both just to be safe. Right. And as you noticed before, you can actually combine them. So think Facebook targeting. I know a lot of you guys do Facebook ads where I tell you guys you can do what's called 3D targeting, which is must match. Right. You can do an interest and then must match behavioral. Right. This is helping you do that on YouTube. So you have you could do purchase intentions and then must match a similar audience specifically to the realtor.com stuff over here. So doing this, right, if we take what we have here, so you should be, again, going through and finding a whole bunch of channels, a whole bunch of related customer uh, and competitor URLs, right? we got realtor.com. We have all these different ones here. You should be able to come up with a whole bunch of targeting, a whole bunch of audiences, okay? And you'll note that one or two of the audiences on here that that I showed you for what we had on the other campaigns was actually targeting keywords and audiences. And so your overall campaign setup is going to be something along the lines of this. So if I say we're doing a niche thing here, okay, and this is in the inner circle uh, for all you GSD people, you have access to this and I'm going to use it, right? And so we've got a niche thing, okay? So what we want to do is campaigns. So we're going to have normally, depending on your budget, more or less campaigns, okay? And so what we're doing here is we're creating specific keywords. And remember, specific keywords, that means you'd have all of these keywords being targeted. And you want to also have uh, audiences. So you would do all the audiences that I just showed you how to make. And then when you're doing the optimization process, what you're doing is actually just seeing which ones are performing, which ones aren't. Very similar to how you would optimize on uh, Facebook itself, right? You're simply killing things based on if your goals are hitting, if they're approved or not, but really just looking at things like ideal lead cost. Remove your keywords with conversions that are 3x your ideal lead cost. Remove audiences, topics, and placements that are 3x your ideal lead cost, right? You want to make sure that there's a clear distinction between audience cost per conversion. And guys, only inner circle people have these flow charts. I'll leave these things on the screen if you want to take a quick screenshot of it, wink, wink. So you know how to do optimization processes and all that kind of stuff, grab hold of this. Because what you're really looking to do on here is understand all this research and these tools that I just put together just told me how do I get my video ads specifically in front of real estate agents who are looking to figure out how to generate more leads, right? So let's pause here for a second and and just kind of rediscuss for a moment what it is about YouTube ads that are so powerful, right? Why Google, what's the difference between Google and Facebook, right? So Google and PPC and YouTube are an intent-based platform. Even YouTube, where it's a little bit more of an interrupt than PPC, you can leverage targeting like the keywords and these different groupings we're talking about right now to be able to create intent-based advertising i.e. I'm putting this thing in front of you, which is in front of where you're already looking to kind of see that thing in a way or another, okay? Whereas Facebook is almost always a pattern interrupt platform. You are not normally on Facebook to buy some shit or to learn some stuff. All of us are a little warped because we're all in the IM world and we're in groups and we're doing all that stuff. But your average Joe right? Chiropractor, real estate agent, contractor, whatever niche you guys work with, right? It's probably not on Facebook to buy your shit. So you have a problem or solution unaware person that you have to create an ad that's very direct and very to the point and all that shit to put specifically in front of them to interrupt whatever they were trying to do and get them to buy your stuff, right? Whereas on YouTube and PPC, we have a little bit of that intent behind them. And if we've done our job properly, on the research side of things and really created this list of assets that were able to go out and create these powerful audiences, right? Can you guys see how this can become a bit of a superpower? 
Now, you do have to understand most of this stuff is going to be a little bit more expensive than it is on Facebook, PPC side especially. YouTube, depending on what you do, you can get around Facebook level lead costs, but you get that intent. If you do it properly, it just takes a little more work because as we move on from actual campaign setup to video structure, it takes a little bit longer to do this part. Okay, so offer and video structure. Let's talk about this real quick. So I'm going to actually move this stuff over. Now, on Facebook, you usually have to create a very strong, scary offer. On YouTube, I suggest you do the same thing, only what we're going to be doing. So say for what we would normally do on Facebook is what we call a control ad. Okay, On YouTube, what we create is two things. We create a educational slash CTA section of our video, and we create a hook section of our video. Okay, What we normally do for testing is we're just going to create, record, let's say three to four, three or four hook sections and one of the education CTA. Okay, We want to keep it to four to five minutes and we want to keep the hook to the first 60 seconds at most, okay? So what we're doing for the testing process by having like video version one, video version two, video version three, you can see again, guys, all you guys who have done the rapid fire testing with me, right? If one is audiences, so for you, for YouTube, it's gonna be keywords, audiences, and maybe topics. Two is hooks. Now you've got your first 60 seconds of the video and three is overall creatives. This is going to be full video offer structure and repeat, right? You can see now how we've got a rapid fire setup for YouTube as well, just with slight differences for the levers and the assets that we have. So now again, understanding that the video structure the offer for the video is going to be scary offer, same as everything else. But the video structure, I'd say a scary offer plus intent, right? You have to understand in this one, it's like, it's, it's always going to be video. So this leads to the video structure, which needs to be a part of what you're doing. So what that ends up being is your video structure. Again, first 60 seconds, it's going to be hook. Minute, let's say two to three. Four, it's going to be small education piece. So for you, it could be like this is, so when we do like a VSL thing, it's like, watch this video to see how we do it to book a call, right? So this is how we do it. 10,000 foot view, right? Here's how we do it. And here's maybe one person that also did it. So that's not just us talking out our ass. Minute four to five is now your CTA, All right? Go watch this training on this call. Go watch the VSL on how to do it. Book a call to have us do it for you right now. Click here to actually go to my Calendly page and make this happen, All right? So doing this properly, this video structure, simple video structure is where we now get into this for the hook, okay? So now all we're doing is this video, shoot it, and then shoot three or four variations of this and that's your rapid fire round two testing. So obviously the video structure and the optimization process and all that kind of stuff starts to become a little bit more complicated, but that's always what it is. And we just want to simplify it down. You're just getting into this process. Okay. So once you have the video shot, you have three or four hooks shot, you've got your offer, all of that. You're just going through this optimization process to make it actually happen. So if we go through this one more time, guys, break it all down. Number one, what are we doing? So if we are an agency trying to get agency clients like we are today, if our niche is real estate, we create first subtopics that are broad keywords. Okay, cool. So we get the broad keywords. Each one of those broad keywords becomes a topic that has specific keywords laid out underneath of it, exactly like this. How do we do more research for that? We use things like YouTube to give us recommendations. We use things like the keyword research tool inside of the ads account itself to give you list uh, average monthly searches and a whole bunch of keyword ideas until we flush out as many of these as we can. 
Then we want to get as many related YouTube channels from competitors, competitors' uh, actual websites, topics and stuff that are related to it, all of this stuff. One more hack, guys. If you go to, I think it's here, and I go to the view page source, see all this wonderful code? You can actually type in at control F and say keywords, and it will show you when you set up a YouTube channel, you get to tell YouTube what meta keywords you want to be ranked for. So if you find some really good competitor YouTube channels that are ranking for this, you can hack it by going into their browser. And again, you do it by view source and just do control F keywords and you'll see exactly this keywords. And you can see what she's put here, real estate cold calling, tips for real estate agents, real estate agent career, all of these are the keywords she's using to try and rank her channel for us. If you want a little bit of ninja shit, you can use that to actually see what these people are using to rank their channels on the back end. So once you've got all that information, right, now you've got your research, then you go to the audience builder like we talked about to build out all the different audiences. You're leveraging it. You're launching campaigns based on what kind of budget you have creating different variations of those campaigns using the audiences we just built. We're structuring the ad video in the way that we just said, the five minute structure, so that we have three to four hooks and then one base video that we're testing. And then we're optimizing here to actually get this done. Now, if you're doing this in a very simplistic way, you don't even have to build out a landing page or any of that shit. You can just send them directly to your calendar link, make a direct offer. I know you're looking for this shit because I found you on YouTube. Let's talk. Or you can create the step one, step two, basic BSL structure page to get them to book that way. Do that. And all of a sudden, you'll know how to use YouTube ads to generate agency clients. Thank you so much for spending the time to watch that amazing training. Like I mentioned previously, my intention is for you not just to watch that training, but if you got something out of it, if you think this information is useful, I want you to continue that journey with us. And you can do that in a couple of ways. One, I want you to smash that subscribe button so that you get notified every single time we put another one of these out, which will be at minimum once to twice per week. The other thing I want you to do is go ahead and click that next video right there beside you so that you can dive in and get shit done. Hope to see you out there.